Garrick, why don't you come on up here, my man? So, Eric, thanks for coming up. Yeah, Eric, uh, Eric's pretty humble, so I'll say a couple things about him. Um, we've been working together for, I think, about eight years. Sounds about right. Um, Eric's team closed 550, is, is, is on track to close 550 units. I think he closed over five, north of 500 last year as well, too. Um, and they are a real estate team. This is not a traditional broker ownage. Everybody on that team has specific roles they play um, and in different positions and, 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 and job duties and things like that. Um, but that's not how it started when we met. So wh why don't you tell them that quick, quick little journey of, of what that was. It really wasn't that quick. It's pretty thankful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll keep it short. So uh, for 14 years, I was an individual agent. Um, and, and literally worked uh, seven days a week, uh, worked my ass off. Um, and uh, me and Brian, uh, you know, he literally told me, he's like, you're, I think I was 30 some years old, you're going to have a heart attack one of these days yeah. if you don't let it yourself. And uh, thankfully, I, I, knew, I knew the right people, I knew I, the, the talent, you know, I've been in the business long enough, I knew who uh, I really needed to leverage with and, and uh, bring on. Right. Right. And started a team from there. Uh, that started with Andrea, who's uh, Let me just stop. He was selling over 100 houses a year as a solo agent. Without an admin. There are, without an admin. <laughs> there are, I mean, that is not, that is not healthy. Is it possible? Certainly. But it's not sustainable. But that's, that's I mean, he was, uh, he was the number one agent in the state of Missouri. Yeah, in just a painful way. Just want to make sure I remember that. Now. Yeah, I just, just yeah. so anyway, it was impressive. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was important for me to find somebody that I, I could trust. Um, like a lot of us, we think we're the greatest thing at, when we're individuals. Yeah, I kind of felt like I had it all figured out. But I had to leverage myself uh, and, and, and go into business with somebody that you know I trusted, and that was you know, Andre. So uh, we, uh, we started our team, and uh, from there, we needed to get an admin. Um, we recruited from a uh, title company, um, Jane, who is our, our lead admin now, um, and just kind of grew from there. Right, and that's where I think his strength lies. And you, and you, you mentioned that you'll see Eric's a really humble dude. Um, and where Eric's strength is, and, and this is what good leaders know, and low produce, producers don't know, is that you can only do so much yourself. My strength, I mean, you guys are having a great time at this conference. I have nothing to do with this conference. I don't know when things are happening. I just get told. I got, I got, I got Jamie right over there. See her? Yeah. I got good talent. And this is floating around here somewhere too. I don't know. She's probably doing something very hard and difficult. To do. <laughs> so painful, lifting something heavy. Um, the, you know, that, and that's how Eric thinks too. He's got, he's got amazing talent and leadership that he gives that responsibility away to, that oftentimes he learns can do it a lot better than him. And that, that's definitely oh, always true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's darn for sure. So, and I think, that's, I think that's the strength of a good leader there, is someone who does that. Uh, talk about your production over those years, uh, with eight years or so. Um, year over year, we're seeing 22%. Increase? Increase. So an increase in production of 22% each year. Um, and I think, you know, it's, he's kind of one of those guys that, you know, he, this, this is what I love about them too, is their, gro their growth, it's steady, it's never stopped despite every market. I mean, it's been through a ton of different markets and reasons and excuses and things like that. But every single year, it's steady patient growth. He didn't do that overnight. You know, so that's, you know, and it was extremely par painful until he got some very talented individuals uh, running his administrative operations and, and Jamie Carr over here on, on bookends and, and Andrea uh, Allen, who actually coaches with us on the other end over here, right? <laughs> then things got a lot less painful for you. A lot less painful. Um, and then the team grew through their leadership. through that Because I'll tell you, if you had Eric training all of his operations staff and all of his sales, like people are laughing in the room to know Eric. <laughs> Those are all my people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that would not be a pleasurable onboarding experience. I can tell you that right now. 
But a good leader knows that. A good leader knows that. And, 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 and he knows that. And I think that once you become aware of that, you become more appreciative of that. And when you become very appreciative of that, you really care about your people. And I can tell you right now, because Eric is not a softie, but Eric really cares about his people. And it's hard to care about your people if you don't appreciate your people. So there's a certain amount of humility, which is if I said the word Eric Craig, I don't know if the word humility is what rolls off the tongue first. I'm not joking, you know, but I'm myself included. I'm, I'm in that same boat. But I'll tell you, it's there because he is very self-aware that he is not the best at everything he does. You know what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. Just think in yourself, how many of you would let somebody else go on a listing appointment for you? Yeah, I just see a couple people looking at me, raising their hand, and the, and the people that are doing it like make over a million dollars a year. You know what I'm saying? That takes a lot of trust that someone might be better at that than you. It also takes a lot of belief in training somebody else, allowing someone else, and that's leadership. A lot of you are very good warriors, but you may not be the best chief if you can't let go of that because your people just need you so bad. All right. If you say so, if you say so, you'd be a great warrior. Maybe not the best chief. So leadership, maybe it's not for you. That's what you're saying. Eric didn't say that for 10 seconds. All they have to do is challenge a guy like Eric. He's like, no, 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 I can be a leader. I can be a leader, you know. <laughs> Which is pretty awesome. Okay, so that's how they grow. So every year he's actually been very patient. He's patient with his goals. Too patient, huh, Andrea? Entirely too paid. Like we make fun of Eric because his goals are not aggressive enough. But guess what? They do hit their goals and they've grown every single year and they have very steady, steady business. And that is what makes him strong is that he appreciates growth and he's patient for growth and he's never stopped growing every single year from 100 units to 150 units to 200 units to 250 to 300 to 350. Just every single year, like clockwork, you can't stop that team from growing and selling more real estate. And the culture and the team is amazing. Probably one of the best retention rates I've ever seen in my life. Um, how many agents do you, do you guys have now, roughly? Uh, we have 17. 17 agents now on the team, okay? Um, which is phenomenal, and they own. Yeah, 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 there you go, yeah. We just, yeah, you know, we add or lose one in the last hour. The, uh, um, the, uh, <laughs> um, so at that point, um, you know, the culture of this team is extraordinarily tight. The events you guys put on, what you do for the community, everything like that is phenomenal. But now we're kind of, so your, your trust in these leaders and developing these other leaders that are very, very high time talent. Andrea coaches for me and Jamie coaches for me, both on an operation administrative standpoint and on a real estate sales standpoint. I've never seen two people do a better job at it. You know, um, you have that kind of, can you imagine if that's, that's who's running your organization? Two people that coach other people, you know, and that's investing in people and caring about these people. Um, and boy, do you at a very high level. So it's gotten to a point now with this team that we're talking about actually expanding into other pillars of income. Great. Tell me about that. Um, in the last year, we actually uh, decided to open up our own title company. So we partnered with uh, a, a national brand title company and, and uh, brought in Jamie and Andrea. And, uh, it's actually uh, opening its doors uh, first of June. So opening a title company. When you have 550 units, that's a lot of units, right? So why don't we, why are we paying someone else to do title? Why don't we handle title ourselves? We can control the level of customer service, increase our income. And that's not just purely out of greed, guys. That's a way to, for him to care for his people. Aren't that other pillars of income for other members in your office too? I think for a lot of us here, you know, we, we, being in the business, you sit back and you see agents that worked uh, in, in the profession for you know, 40, 50 years and they, they retired, but they literally just walk away. And uh, I just, there's gotta be a way to, to figure out to have residual income 
this is just a pillar that allows us to do that, not just me, but I want my people to have that same opportunity. That's correct. And you're in the process of, uh, of opening mortgage as well, too, or starting the conversation, right? Yes. Right. So imagine having those new two pillars of income alongside. Make sense? First things first, we grow the business. And a lot of you guys, you just don't have the patience to be leaders. You need to develop it because you're like, I want to do all that. Well, do you have the agents first? You got to find the people first. Yeah. You got to put the structure and systems in first too, right? Got to have strong leaders and strong talent. Then you have the bandwidth to add talented agents. Then we have the band, then we have the production to open up mortgage and title. Eight years. Right? I think it's really cool what he does too. Um, so, you know, when you have title, now you can provide other avenues and other ways to compensate because, you know, your leaders, as, as the team sells more, your leaders earn more. And then we can also actually partner with you in these affiliate businesses as well too, because you're, you're providing them other virtual passive income. Does everyone on your team have to constantly work to generate more business? Because I don't think anybody wants that as their end game. I think everybody wants some sort of way to generate passive income, right? Do I always have to work for my income? Wouldn't it be nice to have passive income like the successful people do? So what do you provide for them? You know, what, what opportunities do you provide for them? And for his leadership, he's always looking to give them, a, you know, a, a piece of that. A, that retains them. B, that gives them something to look for. C, it, it, it makes them vested in the growth of those affiliate businesses, right? I love what you're doing with your agents with regards to, and I want you to talk about this, what you're doing with helping them uh, with, it, with investing. <laughs> Sure. Um, so in our area, uh, one, one way that I uh, generate more income is uh, subdividing land. And uh, it's an opportunity for individuals on my team that uh, have interest in that. You know, I've been doing it for years. And uh, people just come to me and agent, agent wise and ask like, hey, I'm interested in learning how you're doing that. And I'm bringing them on and letting them invest with me. That's correct. Um, and, and, and when they invest, he, he develops a lot himself now too. That's a newer thing too. That's the last four or five years, right? right. Isn't that about right? Yeah, so he started developing because now he's got other leadership which frees him up to now start acquiring land, learning how to subdivide, subdividing large numbers of, of, of homes, like hundreds of homes. Um, so he's building subdivisions now. Um, and why? He's got some leverage and he can open up other listings now, create his own listings that he can help his agents then sell right? Now he's talking about getting, helping them do that, mentoring in them, yeah. right? Yes. And a lot of them want to buy rentals, which gives them wealth, maybe positive cash flow. Maybe they want to flip houses and maybe they want to develop themselves. So talk about how you help them with, with that, uh, with the uh, financing side of that. Um, I mean, some of these developments are, um, you know, it's expensive and it's, uh, time consuming. So um, we all, I, I carry the financing part of it um, and then we divvy up the time and the responsibilities. Uh, I go with them. You know, we go to planning and zoning meetings. We got to go uh, a lot of municipality meetings and stuff like that. Imagine that. Mentoring. Can you imagine being on a team where the team leader helps teach you how to develop? Where do you get that kind of education? He's actually mentoring you on the development process, how to go through planning approval processes, you know? Helps you with the financing. I mean, I've seen uh, leaders do this, whether they get a home equity line of credit or something, and, and you know, I mean, you might be able to get a home equity line of credit today for five and a half percent, and then, you know, private lend it out for 10%. So it's a win-win. You actually make, that's a normal private hard money rate, you know? So you actually make a little bit of interest, they get financed, so you, you know, you've got some sort of win-win there, you're not just giving everything, and they're financed, and you, then you're mentoring them through the process that also ensures that your investment is safe. Um, I've got some that help them secure other private money, you know, you might have some relationships that some of your agents don't, so you might be able to get some sort of, you know, hard money lender or private financer to help invest them, and you kind of vouch for them. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Lots of different ways to do that. But now you're helping your agents build 
wealth. That's appreciating. That's caring. That's going beyond what a normal leader will do. How many leaders just sit there and say, convert your leads, convert your leads. You guys aren't doing enough work. Well, boy, you'll find a better result when you're actually giving and coming from contribution and developing talent. And there are a few people on this planet that care more and develop talent like him. That's because he really does truly care. He doesn't show he cares, but he freaking cares by what he does. (laughs) He doesn't. He doesn't show it. He's not a softy, but he does through his actions. And his leaders know that. They absolutely know they've got his back and he cares about their best interests because he shows it. It's through action, right? And it's through development. Development of leaders, development of individuals, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, Everything you've done uh, with your team is phenomenal. Very proud of it. Fun to watch where you go uh, and where those pillars of income go. Just so you guys know, I also want you to know this. He is in a, uh, a town near Kansas City, Missouri, but a, a very large portion of their business where he is where he is from and many of them live is a little town called Smithville, right? How many people live in Smithville? Uh, like 12,000. 12,000 people in Smithville. Um, what percentage of your business comes from Smithville? Maybe I should. 62%. 62% comes from a town of 12,000 people. <laughs> Can you imagine being in a town of 12,000 people and selling 275 houses there? last year, in that low inventory year. Do you know what kind of market share you have to have? Do you know how much much the other agents in that industry love him? (laughs) 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 Oh, it's such good stuff. The, uh, (laughs) oh, it's so fun. So yeah, um, but that, I mean, do, do, do you know what a, percentage of market share that is? Notice I'm not looking at Eric at all, because do you guys? <laughs> yeah, half the homes in that town. So if you think you live in a small town and can't do this and put up these numbers, oh no, oh no, it can be done. So Eric, thank you so much, my man. Let's give him a huge round. <laughs>